Okay, this is a follower submission. OP, if you are in the house and want to claim your story, feel free to. This is, am I the astronaut for refusing to feed my sister-in-laws after she gave her food to her dogs? My husband and I threw a barbecue on Saturday for the whole family. Mother-in-law, father-in-law, sister-in-law times two, brother-in-law times four, all their kids, my parents, and a few cousin. It was a large gathering. Both sister-in-law and brother-in-law brought their dogs times three. I didn't really want the dogs here, but at the same time, I kind of just sucked it up because we were going to be outdoors anyways. Anyways, sister-in-law's dogs are extremely high energy and food driven. One is a giant Roddy and the other is some sort of Russian Chihuahua, which I like to read as Chihuahua. I think that's what she said. So small lap dog. Brother-in-law's dog is fine. He is old and just kind of lays around looking for pettings. Black lab. So we started dishing out plates or whatever, and my sister-in-law is just waiting and staring at us but not saying anything. When we get everyone's food, she goes, um, where's their food? And points down at her two dogs who are standing by the grill begging. I told her that I'm not feeding her dogs food that cost me over $300. I purchased this food on my dime, and I'm not going to see it go to a dog when other people could want more food. She said something to the effect of, well, what the hell are they supposed to eat then? They eat with us for every meal and now they're just going to be sitting there thinking they did something wrong because you won't feed them. So I responded with, with all due respect, that is not my problem. You should have figured out something instead of expecting us to feed your dog steaks and burgers. Anyway, she ended up putting her food on the ground for her dogs and sat with her arms crossed the whole time, glaring at everyone around while they were eating, saying, that sure looks yummy. Good thing the rest of the family gets to eat. My husband kept coming up and saying, just give her a plate, hon. She's causing drama. And I refused. She gave her plate to her dogs, who shouldn't have been fed the food I purchased anyhow, because I clearly said no already. I'm not going to give in to the entitlement when she didn't do anything to contribute. If I allowed her to walk all over us this time, then it would happen over and over in the future. Mother and father-in-law are on my side, as apparently she pulls the same shit at their house. But everyone else thinks that I'm an asshole for not feeding her after she gave her plate to the dogs. Am I the asshole? Ooh, boy. Okay, different dog people believe different things. There are a few different issues going on here. I think as a dog person, either you're okay with table scraps or you're not. I personally am not because Luna, who is a toddler brain inside a horse body, she, if you give her people food, thinks it's okay for me to take people food and then ends up pulling stuff off the counters and it's 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 a behavior that we had to change. So we have a hard boundary for no people food for her because she will steal food if you give her people food. She doesn't know the difference. So we've had to create a, a line of separation there. Some people are okay with it. And if you're okay with it, that's cool. However, you can't impose that on someone else when you're a visitor in their house. You can't just assume that they're going to make expensive steak and burgers at a cookout for your dogs. That's something that requires some pre-communication to be like, hey, is it okay if I bring them? They would like to eat food as well. I can chip in, whatever. Or I'll bring something that we can cook for them or I'll bring something separate for them. It requires some communication if you want to do that. Sister-in-law just threw a little tantrum fit here and that just kind of reinforced her being unreasonable. She knew it wasn't okay to give the food to the dogs or knew she wasn't supposed to. It was against the host's wishes. Still did it and then just sat there pouting. Sure looks good. Glad everyone else gets to eat but me. She seems like a really fun person to be around. At Candy Thunder's family's house, everybody brings their dogs. It's There's almost as many dogs there as there are people sometimes. And some people believe different things even within that group. Like table scraps are okay for some of them and they're not for some of them. But you do you. You do you, boo-boo. However, I think imposing that on someone else sucks. So I would say NTA here. I'm going to go that route. NTA, not the asshole for refusing to give her another plate whenever you said the first plate shouldn't go to the dogs. She had her plate. She made her choice. It's on her after that. She was trying to force your hand by giving that plate to the dogs after you said no. So also the way she asked in the first place was just really shitty. Um, What are they supposed to eat? I don't, I don't know. They're not my dogs. What are they supposed to eat? You tell me. Did you bring food for them? Nothing that she approached here. She approached in a nice diplomatic way at all. And if she was trying to convince someone to do something, pitching a fit, I don't think is the way to do it. She's giving them a freaking gourmet meal here. It is not just scraps. It is an actual full plate of food. That does make a difference. Let's talk about where sister would land here. Okay, as a reminder, most of you know about the ASCON scale already and know how it works, but if this is your first time seeing it, this is modeled after the U.S. military's DEFCON scale. ASCON 1 is the worst severe asshole. ASCON 4 is the least severe asshole. So 4 is you could have done that differently. 3 is you should have done it differently. 2 is 
you definitely shouldn't have done it and ask on one is you're a terrible human. We definitely checked the box for four and three here. I'm thinking two as well. I think we checked the box for two. Okay, sister-in-law here, we're going with two. I'm not gonna call her an absolute shite human. I don't think she makes it that far, but she's definitely a two. Okay, let's go ahead and get into this cake story. This one is from the AITA subreddit, and it is Am I the Ask Not for Not Serving Cake to One of My Coworkers? Rut row. Throw away, I-24 love to bake as a hobby. I usually do desserts for friends and families and also occasionally bring stuff to the office to share with my coworkers. This past weekend was my friend's birthday, so she decided to celebrate it Monday since a lot of us had off work on Memorial Day. As a gift to her on Sunday night, I made a delicious four-layer chocolate cake with chocolate frosting to bring to her party. That sounds really freaking good. She was super appreciative and loved the cake. I realized that I had a lot of excess frosting after finishing making her cake, so I made a second, smaller, two-layer cake to bring to the office on Tuesday, yesterday, as a fun surprise. My coworkers seemed excited about the cake, and many thanked me, and I decided to cut it up around lunchtime to serve to people. As I was cutting up the cake, one of my coworkers, 40s, male, said, You really need to work on your piping work with the frosting. It looks a little sloppy. Dude, come on now. Okay, now I'll be honest, the cake did look a bit sloppy. I was really only making it to use up the excess frosting left over from my friend's cake, so I did run out when I was piping a border around the edge of the cake. But I was also really annoyed because I went out of my way to make a cake just to be nice for my coworkers, and he felt he had to critique my work. It's not like I'm a contestant on Great British Bake Off here. It's also not like the cake was disgusting or poorly slapped together. It still tasted fine and just looked like an amateur cake, and I still put a lot of effort into it. Anyways, I responded by saying, all right, then don't have any, and didn't hand him a piece. I realized I probably came off rude here, and he looked a little shocked and walked away. Later that day, I got a warning from our HR rep about being rude and not bringing baked goods in if I wasn't going to let certain people have any. So I guess he went to HR about it. Really, dude? Come on. I'll probably talk to HR about it later today and try to clear the air, but I don't know if I'm at fault and should apologize or if his comment was unwarranted. Yeah, his comment was unwarranted. And what did his HR complaint say? I said something stupid and therefore I... I didn't get kick. I would like for you to reprimand her. Sir, who's actually at fault? Well, I mean, I said the stupid thing that led to me not getting the cake, uh, but she was the one who withheld the cake and got offended by, by my saying something. So um, I'm offended that she was offended because I offended her. It's the circle of life. NTA. No, ma'am. If if somebody's not going to be appreciative, they're not going to be appreciative at all. And they're just going to be like, eh, you know, ah, that looks terrible. You should really work on doing a better job of this. Uh, yes, I, of course I want one. Thank you. He was rude from the get go. So I think in this case, you had every right to be like, yeah, OK, it's a small cake. Um, going to be a, a dick. You don't get any. Sorry, asshole. The fact that he ran to HR and was that butthurt about it really just seals the deal here. If he had just sucked it up, it would be maybe a different conversation. I still think OP is NTA here, but but if he had not gone to HR, it would have been like, well, maybe we don't really know. You know, if he was just playing around or if this is just who he is or whatever. But the fact that he went to HR because he didn't get cake after he said something stupid seals the deal about who he is. And he's the asshole. OP is NTA here. No cake for you. She could be the cake Nazi. Yeah. It doesn't take much to uh, to offend the cake Nazi. No cake for you. It was probably just, yeah, uh, she's serving cake and just, just intentionally left me out. I did nothing wrong at all. I was just standing there and had my hand out and she just said, you don't get any. Apparently she doesn't like me. OP brought the cake. So she was essentially telling him, you don't get any because you were rude. And I think it would probably work like that anywhere even if he was at his own freaking parents house and they were having cake if he'd said something rude and shitty about the cake he wouldn't get any it was something that she didn't even have to do she did it just to be nice and you know she could have kept that cake at home and worked on it all week worked on it like eating away at it all week but instead she brought it to work just to be nice and homeboy's like it looks like my toddler made this Ooh. let's look at the scale let's talk about this boy so he said something stupid maybe he was trying to be constructive what did he specifically say he said you really need to work on your piping work with the frosting it just looks a little sloppy why would you ever say that if someone is handing you a free piece of cake why would you ever be like oh it looks like my toddler drew this 
He definitely shouldn't have done it. He's at least a two going to HR after the fact. Does that bump him up? Going to HR for this makes him an ass con one. I would agree with this. Saying it was a two thing. Going to HR afterwards and victimizing himself whenever he was the initial aggressor really bumps him up. He's a one because he messed with the effing cake. Don't offend the cake holder. Don't bite the hand that feeds you cake. Faux show. Going to HR like running to mommy. Candy Thunder is HR here, so, you know. It really is running to mommy, if I do it. I don't think I would find much reinforcement or solace in, uh, in HR, because normally, if somebody's doing something stupid, it's me, so. Okay, this is a follower submission again. OP, if you are here and want to claim your story, feel free. This one is, am I the astronaut for telling my coworker she's being disrespectful? Am I the astronaut for telling a coworker that she's being disrespectful for taking more PTO when she just came back from maternity leave? Oh, boy. In January, we had two coworkers go out on maternity leave and one that was on medical leave. The three of us that were left worked 60 hours a week each while they were gone. We were promised our PTO request when they came back. Well, now two of the three are back and they both have made endless PTO requests, left early and called out several times. My PTO starts in a week. I'm looking forward to it as I have not had any time off for myself in four years. Now I'm being told I have to come back early from my PTO to cover three shifts that need covered because two of my coworkers have now put put PTO requests in for the last five days that I'm gone. I told them no. I need a break after their maternity leave, and they are being extremely disrespectful for requesting so much PTO after their return. They need to step aside and let those of us that busted our butts have a chance to recharge. I am now being told that I'm being a jerk because I told them they are being disrespectful and refused to come back early from my vacation. So, am I the asshole? This was a short one. It is, am I the ass cannot for telling my coworker she's being disrespectful? And it was for taking more PTO when she just came back from maternity leave. Why is this something that the employees are having to figure out on their own? This seems like something that a manager should be coordinating to get things covered. I assume that's who reached out and said that OP here needed to come back five days early to cover shifts that have since been requested as PTO. Now, here's the kicker. And again, I don't think this is OP's problem, but post-pregnancy, there are things that can come up. There are complications. It could be complications with mom or the baby that could require needing to be out that extra time. So there could be a really good reason behind the request, but it's not OP's fault. It's not OP's problem. I know that almost every business in the United States is understaffed right now. Like hiring and recruiting has been a major issue. It's one of the major marketing initiatives that we hear the most about, actually. So that could be an issue there, but this seems like it's something that should be a management problem and not a boots on the ground employee problem. They shouldn't have to fight this out themselves. It should be something that that a manager figures out how to finesse because this one requires some finesse and you can't expect them to finesse it amongst themselves. They're just going to argue. So yeah, it seems like a very uncomfortable situation. It was approved and OP's already out on this PTO. And then it's like, hey, oh, we uh, could you uh, could you come on back? Could you come on back from that PTO that you are that you are out there? you know, enjoying right now, probably in the middle of vacation or something. But yeah, we're going to need you to go ahead and end that and come on back. Now, the comment here about being disrespectful for taking it, I think might be a little bit harsh because you need to understand why the request was made to be able to make that statement. That might be a little bit tough. And again, like I said, you know, post maternity leave words are hard. There are a myriad of reasons that could present the need for that additional time off that's needed, but that's not OP's problem. But because it's not OP's problem, I think taking a jab right there is unneeded. I understand getting pissed. I understand having feelings about it, saying the disrespectful part, not unwarranted, but it was unneeded. It didn't help solve anything. Didn't add any value to anything here. It was just basically a boundary reinforcement of saying like, no, I'm not coming back. And I think it's bullshit that you're asking this. Should have been a management issue. We'll go ahead and say NTA for OP here. It might actually be a four because it could have been done differently, but, um, 
But this is not OP's issue. This is a management issue. It's not something that OP should be trying to solve on their own at all. I don't think it was, you know, one of the employees that came back from maternity leave and trying to take more PTO that made that phone call. I'm guessing it was a manager of some kind, but this is the manager's problem. So if anything, I'd be pissed at the manager for even making the request instead of hurling that insult at the employee who is coming back from maternity leave and trying to take more time. They're clearly understaffed. So if someone is out and someone else has to jump in and pick up the slack, like there's, there's an issue there with staffing. Three people out at the same time would suck, especially if it's a small team or a small team here. Three people being out at the same time would be really, really tough. But my assumption is that most organizations would operate like ours when it comes to a small business. And if someone is out, it's up to the boss to pick up the slack, right? Leadership team needs to be able to jump in and pick up slack to support the team. And maybe this is just a difference in the leadership style. You know, there's the servant leadership style. There's an in the trenches leadership style. There's a bunch of different styles. Their leader here may just have a, uh, just get it off my desk. I don't want to deal with it. You guys figure it out style, which isn't really sustainable because pretty soon everybody's going to be gone. Depending on the size of the team, depending on how the, the structure of the organization here, there are a lot of variables that are in play here, but it shouldn't be their job to figure this out. It's a complicated issue. Uh, luckily, we have a great team that communicates really well and get things covered ahead of time. Okay, this one is from the AITA subreddit, and it is, am I the astronaut for telling people not to eat the food at my sister's wedding? Uh oh. My husband, 27 male, and I, 26 female, were married eight months ago. We had a big wedding with lots of food and drinks and people. I knew we would likely have leftovers, so had arranged for them to be donated to the soup kitchen we sometimes work with. However, my mom went behind my back and took most of it with her. I didn't really know what happened to the food until now. My sister Callie, 30 female, got married over the long weekend. She didn't want to mess with any of the planning and knowing how my mom was during my wedding decided to let our mom take over the whole thing. All we had to do was show up where we were told and party. The ceremony was beautiful, but it was when the buffet was revealed that I noticed something odd. Like the food looked eerily familiar, like identical to what I had from my wedding except for a little more dried out and sad. I found an opening and went to ask my mom about it where she happily told me she saved a fortune by unfreezing the food from my wedding to serve to the guests now. I was horrified and immediately voiced my concerns about safety. She got upset and I said I was acting like a snob and should be happy the food wasn't going to waste. I argued that it was never going to be wasted, but she wouldn't hear that. I didn't want to make a scene, but was worried about people getting sick, so snuck off to see my sister. She was horribly embarrassed. Mentioned that mom said something about saving money, but didn't question it because she didn't want to foot the bill like I had. She told me not to eat the food and thanked me for the warning. From there, my husband and I discreetly started to telling some guests to be wary of the food and the rest of the night was fine. My mom caught some flack for being cheap, but I've also been catching heat. Some of our relatives have been saying that I intentionally made my family look bad and that the food was fine as it was frozen and then defrosted for the wedding. They said no one would have known if I didn't make a stink over it. I don't know if I did anything wrong. I could use some help and would like to know if I should apologize. Am I the ass cannot? Edit, I'm getting a lot of repeat questions, so I figured I'd post here. My wedding had about 200 guests. My husband has a large family and we intentionally planned for more people to come and knew that a lot wouldn't for one reason or another. So we knew we'd likely have leftovers and wanted to be smart about it. My sister and her husband have been together for about 10 years. They recently decided to get married for tax reasons and wanted to do a courthouse wedding, but my mom begged her to let her do an event. So she had a small wedding with only about 50 people. My sister hates planning and people, so she let my mom do everything. Have y'all ever heard of garage freezers? They're super common where I'm from. Okay, apparently a lot of people were asking like how in the hell did they manage to save and store all of this? But okay, depending on what kind of food it is, once it's served, it was probably, you know, heated up and then if you take food that has been heated up and refreeze it and then warm it up again, that's not great, right? I'm no expert in how food would be contained here. You know who is? Tony Spark? Is it okay? <laughs> Tony Sparks says it's disgusting. So assuming that you had a bunch of bunch of warmers that food was put in, is there any kind of food that this would be okay to do it with? How, how long was in between the two? Eight months. There were eight months between the two? Yeah, and it sat out on a buffet all day. Eight months? That's too long. 
that's too that's too long okay i mean i guess it's as simple as asking like would you be comfortable feeding your wedding guest leftovers from eight months ago we ain't have nothing but maggoty bread for three stinking days what about them they're fresh no would not be okay with that would not be okay with that at all no 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 you know what the funny part here is that mom hid it from everyone she wanted to do this she begged op's sister to let her manage this event and hid where the food was coming from or what was being used here hid it from everyone intentionally because she knew it was a sus move she knew saved a fortune yes until all of the medical bills start hitting you because of all the people with food poisoning now are sending their bills to you and then it won't be saving a fortune anymore it will just be a bad choice so op's question here was am i the asking not for telling people not to eat the food at my sister's wedding um no i think i think this was handled this, the way that they handled it discreetly, they didn't make this big announcement. They didn't talk shit on mom for doing it. They just said, hey, you might want to stay away from some of this food. It's from eight months ago. They did it discreetly. I feel like they handled it well and they did the right thing here. Mom was pissed, of course. It's not like they were just trying to hoard it all for themselves. They were just trying to help people out and do the right thing here and do it in a very delicate way. So mom being pissed off about it is whatever. Where is mom in this story for serving the food in the first place and then for getting pissed about it? Trying to save some bucks, I get, but taking leftovers, freezing them for eight months and then bringing them back out, I don't get. I mean, I wouldn't even think of this as an option because I wouldn't want to serve wedding guest leftovers in the first place. You have plenty of options for cheaper food options that aren't eight month old leftovers. She diverted it from a shelter to save some bucks and then served it to wedding guests yeah we're going for it mama here you go for your meal here at this event we'll be serving you ask on one it's an asshole that's gone bad it's turned you probably should need it but you have to because you're on ask on one that's all there is if you want to survive you have to eat rotten asshole it's turned ah diverting it from people who could have actually used it holding on to it eight months and then serving it to wedding guests to try to save a buck ill-advised follow our submission here if this is your story op if you're in chat and want to raise your hand feel free this one is am i the astronaut for not paying my former mother-in-law her rent I, 30 female, live with my former mother-in-law and have my kids and boyfriend, 32 male, here as well. I moved in two years ago under the verbal agreement I could cover. I would cover half the bills to save money during my pregnancy and finishing school. When I got here, I paid for a full year of AAA and gave her money for the bills that I didn't even contribute to. I started showing my gratitude for the chance by making meals and cleaning up since she worked. A few weeks later, she switched it up and wanted me to give her $400 a month, which I didn't argue but was irked about. That same month, she stopped buying groceries and dog food for her dog since I had been okayed to get one too. So I started paying $650 a month to feed myself, my son, and boyfriend as well as her. This turned into $850 when prices for food went up and she moved her mother in who was diagnosed with dementia. I continued to clean, do dishes, and started retrieving water from the city to fill the storage tanks following the failure of the well. I cooked every night, not for just my family, but for her and her mother. And if I didn't, I would get pressured or manipulated into doing so. So. Mind you, this still continues to this day. I had my youngest in November of 21 and graduated in September of 22. I have paid $400 a month consistently, even though I don't have a legal change on the signed lease we had when we first moved in. I started a great new job earlier this year. She makes side comments of how she thinks it's funny with her overtime. She makes as much as I do when I went to college. I don't make overtime. My position doesn't grant me the chance for overtime. Then turns around and says that she has no money, is broke and poor. But she's making over $6,000 every month after taxes with my rent and her mom's social security added into her income. She says she's constantly tired. She's working 50 to 60 hours a week. I work 40, but I drive one and a quarter hours one way for my commute five days a week. So I equate to the same time for my job that she does if you include my commute. She still expects me to buy $850 in groceries to feed her and her mom as well as cook them. I recently stopped buying that much food and instead enough only to feed my family. She still uses my groceries over the ones she does buy if she gets actual food. I have a thing against tube meat, chicken thighs, and Walmart brand bread. Tube meat? Are we just going to leave that one alone? 
You should probably leave that one alone, huh? Okay, I'll leave it alone. I buy the packages of meat that you can ensure look fresh and have less fat percentages. I also prefer chicken breast and artisan breads for the texture. I don't care about noodles or sauces, canned goods, or if yogurt is great value. I do have some small food preferences, hence my choices, in the purchasing for them. If I don't have a meal planned, I get manipulated or guilted into cooking for everyone. If I don't, she uses my items to cook for everyone, leaving hers because she knows I won't use it. She has complained about us since the day we moved in, saying I wasn't doing enough, helping enough, or providing for the household. Mind you, I cooked clean, did the dishes, hauled water, and have cut the lawn with a push mower, all until I started working. We live on almost three acres. Two, three acres with the push mower. This is like my childhood right there. That would take some time. That's like a full day. She loudly complains to my ex-husband, her son, her boyfriend, and others about how I and my boyfriend don't do anything. And if she wants it done right, she has to do it. So I stopped doing everything altogether to get her to realize what we have been doing for years. Now, at least for me, she is being honest since I refuse to actually do anything. The last month there was a blow up over bills and my boyfriend, children, and I being the reason her bills quadrupled. Her mom leaves leaves lights on 24-7 and sleeps with the TV on. We are out of the house for 9 to 10 hours a day. My oldest goes to school, youngest to daycare, boyfriend to college, and I to work. It doesn't make sense to me to blame us when they are home and watching TV, using computers, running lights, fans, and other items like the microwave, washer or dryer while we are gone. It turned into a screaming match with my boyfriend confronting her over the lease and overpayment on rent for the last two years. She refused to listen and talk about it. She refused to address the food, the food situation, and she she refused to address other concerns we have had as well. So to regain some of my overpayment and money spent on food, we followed through with what we said in the fight. We wouldn't pay rent. And now I'm getting hounded from her son and getting snippets of her complaining and threatening to kick us out in a few months. Honestly, we've been looking for a house for months to get out, and I think we finally have one. I feel like I'm justified, but also feel guilty and like an asshole, but I'm done with her mind games and bullcrap. I'm wanting her to feel the hurt that I've been feeling since we've been there. Woo! That's intense. You know, I would honestly talk to a lawyer because if you had a signed lease in the very beginning of this, like you said, I would talk to a lawyer about everything that has happened here, what you've been expected to pay for. But whatever the initial lease said is probably what you would have to revert to. If you did something in addition to what was on that signed lease, you may not get credit back for that unless you can prove that it was demanded of you to allow you to still be there. But man, I have so many questions. So this is your ex-husband's mom's house that you live in with your now boyfriend and kids. So that dynamic seems very tricky right off the rip. That seems like a very tough situation to try to keep the peace in. And honestly, it sounds like she was pulling all the shit just to try to get you to move out. She was probably too big of a coward to say, I want you to move out. And instead just decided to make your life hell. And you played ball for a long time until now. So she got her way for a long, long, long time. Now, will she be able to survive in this home without you there? Is she going to be able to, I mean, between her job and like you said, with mom's social security, she making about 6k a month, so she can probably pull it off, but maybe not. And maybe if she needs you there to be able to survive, then I would expect her to be a little more amenable about things. And maybe that needs to be a discussion. Like if you need us here to be able to afford being here, then stop treating us like shit and we'll stay. But man, staying in this place just seems like it would be hell. I'm sorry that you're dealing with this. It seems like a tough thing from beginning to end. This is a tough situation. Mother-in-law has taken advantage of her and I don't know if that's the end of it, just that she took advantage of her, or if she was doing all of this to try to force her out. Not sure where this is coming from. I think this is where it becomes a legal conversation, at least consulting with a lawyer to say, here's what's going on. And in a lot of cases like this, you know, this could be a, a letter gets sent and that's the end of it. Or it could be something that ends up leading to more legal actions. But I would definitely want to know what my legal options were before I started doing things like refusing to pay rent. Because whatever your initial lease says is probably what you have to keep doing. Nothing in addition to that, but you probably have to keep doing what was on there. This situation sounds just super complicated and uncomfortable for everyone from beginning to end. But I think in your position, I would definitely want to talk to a lawyer here. The question of, am I the asshole for not paying my former mother-in-law her rent? I don't feel like I can answer that question. I feel like that has to be a, a legal conversation. Okay, we've got
got another follower submission to read here. This one is Am I the Askinaut for standing up to my sister-in-law on her wedding day? My sister-in-law, Dana, didn't want me at the church for her wedding to my brother, Mark, because she needed someone to watch the reception set up at the park and make sure the food was out and ready for the guest as they arrived. So you got put to work. Cool. She asked me to do this weeks before the wedding day, and I asked if someone else could watch the reception set up, picnic blankets, some bunting balloons, a few coolers, and a stereo so I could attend my brother's wedding. She said she needed everyone else at the church so no one else was available to watch the setup. In the same conversation, I asked if I could have a plus one and was told yes. So I thought I'd found a solution to the problem. I asked my best friend, Sarah, to be my plus one and asked her to watch the setup at the park while I went to the wedding ceremony. Sarah was more than happy to help and was excited that she could attend my brother's wedding reception. Mark and I were very close. Mark spent a lot of time with Sarah and I growing up. Sarah even dated Mark's best friend for a while, so our friendship circles were completely mixed. She was disappointed when she wasn't originally invited to the wedding and so was ecstatic to be my plus one. When Dana saw me at the church, she was angry. I explained that my plus one was at the park. She was mad that I was trusting a stranger to watch her reception set up. I explained that my plus one is Sarah and Mark and I have known her for 10 plus years. She was then livid that I had invited Sarah to her wedding. She told me to leave and to go to the park and make Sarah go home. So I went to speak to my brother about it. He said I could stay for the ceremony and photos and he was happy Sarah would be at his wedding reception as he thought she was invited anyway. Dana said I was creating tension between her and Mark on her wedding day and was starting their marriage with a disagreement. I stood my ground saying that I have the right to watch my brother get married and that she is overreacting because Sarah will make sure everything is ready at the park. I had dropped Sarah off at the park before I went to the church. Sarah helped one of Dana's sisters put up the bunting and finish setting up the picnic rugs so Dana's sister could get to the church before the ceremony started. She also set up the charcuterie board and laid out all the food nicely so when we all arrived from the church, everything was ready. Sarah had recently done the world's greatest shave to fundraise for cancer and was wearing a pastel pink wig at the reception. All of her other wigs were more vibrant colors. She also wore a simple corseted shirt with balloon sleeves with a peasant skirt. At the reception, someone asked Sarah about the wig, so she told them about the fundraiser she'd just finished and that she wore the wig to protect her bald head from getting burnt. Dana asked me again to make Sarah leave by describing her as a pirate clown. <laughs> a pirate clown? She called her a pirate clown. I said, if Sarah leaves, I have to leave as we came together in my car. I also told her that Sarah helped set up and put out the food. Dana said Sarah has to leave as she is making the day all about her. And if that means I have to leave too, then that's fine. My brother overheard and said he wants Sarah and I to stay because we are his sisters. 11 years later, Dana still says I ruined her wedding day. Every time she brings it up, I feel guilty and wonder if I'm the asshole. Should I have done what she asked, stayed at the park and sent Sarah home instead of attending the ceremony? Am I the asshole for standing up to her on her wedding day? Am I the asshole for getting my brother involved? This sounds like a day. So wait, 11 years later, they're still married? That's the surprising thing in all of this to me. 11 years later, she hasn't run him off. One factoid I need to go back and find here. Sarah is a friend, right? She dated the groom's best friend, never dated the groom. Why is Dana so adamant about not wanting her at the wedding? I, I could only think this made sense if they had dated and had some kind of history that would make her uncomfortable and not wanting her there, but not wanting the sister to be there at the ceremony, that's that's not okay. And she hadn't even discussed that with her fiance, soon to be husband, because he wanted her there. He knew nothing about it. And he thought Sarah was invited too. She has her feelings about things and she's, you know, the bride, the bride does what the bride wants on the wedding day. However, there has to be some consulting with the groom as well, doesn't there? There has to be an agreement here, especially if it's affecting the groom's family. And he viewed Sarah as family too. So two of his sisters were getting excluded by Dana and he wasn't okay with it. So he piped up and said, no, I want them to stay. But now 11 years later, Dana still blames this on you, OP. But she's got some kind of insecurity. I don't understand not wanting the sister to be there. Dana, why would you want the sister to not be there at the ceremony? You could have had anybody watch the setup. One of the things why I'm just really confused about them or I'm surprised that they're still married because Dana, 11 years later, still pushing this. It's like, wow, anything that he's ever done in this marriage, he knows the statute of limitations will never be up on it because here, 11 years later, she's still using this shit against his sister. So she's going to hold on to everything that he does wrong forever. How are they still married? He must see something in her that we don't. No, OP, not the asshole for standing up to your sister-in-law on her wedding day. 
Why? Because the groom wanted you to be there. And he's your family. Now she is too. However, at the time, they weren't married yet. He was your family. He wanted you there. You get to be there. She doesn't get to just put you to work to keep you away, which is what it seems like was happening here. You got the job covered by someone. She should have been happy about that, but didn't even want the other girl there. So what the hell? This Dana gal seems like she's very impossible to make happy. Another reason that I'm very surprised that they're still married 11 years later. Not the asshole for standing up to her on her wedding day because she was being unreasonable. Not the asshole for getting your brother involved because he's your brother. And he's the groom. He gets a say too, right? Candy Thunder has to explain to me all the time why women do shitty things to each other. And I think there was an episode of Selling Sunset on last night. You were watching the last episode of the season. Is that right? And of course I had a thousand questions because I don't typically watch with her. So I was like, okay, who's this? What's she right? What's the motive here? What's going on here? And then I was like, I'll just shut up because you're trying to enjoy the last episode. And here I am like, catch me up. I want to understand what's going on. And then I remembered that I didn't care. She said I was so proud until that last sentence. I wanted to understand, but then I realized that my try to understand was actually hindering you from being able to enjoy the show. Uh, okay, so Candy Thunder has to point out to me like what is happening when women are being shitty to each other and, and why it's happening and, and blah, blah, blah. Is there a women being shitty to each other motive here that I'm not seeing? Like what possible reason could Dana have for not wanting the sister there? Is she so insecure that maybe she felt like she was going to be upstaged? Is she so insecure that she didn't want someone who had good hair there? Like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. What things could contribute to that? Could be that, you know, if they were close, she's getting ready to have him all to herself and she just didn't want anybody that had a strong connection there. She wanted to have his focus and attention completely. That's entirely possible. It's hard for me to see those motives that Candy Thunder would be able to point out instantly lane be like it could be this could be this could be this and i'm like how why why would that ever be an option my god you're the bride for the day like all eyeballs are on you you're the top dog of the day you don't have to shit on other people you don't have to you don't have to drive everyone else down i just don't understand the motive behind it i don't understand the need to shit on other people just to make sure that there's absolutely no risk that anyone is even in the same stratosphere as the bride i don't understand it all right we got another follower submission this one is titled am i the astronaut for not wanting to help my husband when he asked for it the title sounds bad but let me explain i 27 female am married to e 26 male this summer we will celebrate our fifth wedding anniversary however we've been more like paying roommates lately we'll go ahead and red flag that We fell on hard times and moved in with my parents. My parents and I own a small bakery. It is my passion, and I love having my own store to do what I love and bake what I want. The store has been in business for almost five years, and it's been a rocky road. I do 90% of the work as we can't afford to hire other people with COVID hitting a few months after we opened and then inflation. Somehow, we've managed to survive. However, an important part of the story is that I can only be paid $200 per week, and it's been this way for three and a half to four years. We just aren't making enough, so I can be paid more for the amount of work I do and the amount of hours I am at the bakery. I should be getting close to 65 to 70 hour paycheck. I do the baking, cake decorating, sandwich making, shopping, and cleaning, but I continue on because I see the progress the store is making and sometimes I'd rather that money be put towards more products and ingredients. My husband, on the other hand, has always had an issue with this amount. He had a good paying job making $750 to $800 per week. However, he was terminated in the beginning of the year, so now he started working part time and is only receiving $650 every two weeks. We have two small kids, male age three, female age one and a half. We have close to $20,000 in debt, credit cards and a car loan, and one income. He's been asking for four months for me to close the bakery and get a paying job. I've done the two jobs, the bakery and some other baking job, and it's extremely hard on me. I've only lasted a few months at the job before getting overwhelmed. I'm trying really hard to make my store, but he's insistent that I get something else. I would say I'm a traditional woman, and I think the man should provide for the family and my parents feel the same. My husband grew up an only child in a broken home and has had a lot of problems with his family. At times he was given all name brand stuff and whatever he wanted and sometimes I feel it's the same thing. He wants what he wants and he throws a tantrum when he doesn't get his way and doesn't understand that I'm trying to do this for our family. My husband and mother have not been getting along for the past few months for a few different reasons and I'm fed up with all the back and forth. I am always in the middle of their argument trying to defuse the situation. My mom watches our kids while we're 
longer at work Tuesday through Saturday, 7 to 1030, used to be until 3 p.m. My mom feels unappreciated by my husband for what she does for us, and my husband feels belittled by her. Nothing he can do is enough for her. He cleans the common areas we share. She nitpicks that he missed something or that he did laundry on her day. Petty little things. The final straw for him was when she accused us of lying to her about the time he gets out of work. I told her 1030 because it's a 20 minute drive for him to get home and sometimes he'll stop at the bakery to get lunch to either take back home or quickly eat it there. He hasn't eaten all morning, maybe just a coffee. I feel like no matter what, I am the asshole to someone, either to my husband because I won't leave my store, I've worked hard to establish to help him pay our debts and bills, or to my parents who have not only helped work at the bakery but have funded the bakery since day one. P.S. My parents are not rich. My dad does taxes and sells life insurance, so he knows a lot about money and finances. So am I the asshole for not wanting to get a second job to help my husband? (sighs) Small business ownership is tough. It is one of the toughest things that you could ever decide to do. That's why one of the lines that I had in that laundry video that I posted a little while back, which was not a story. It was just me being funny about doing a massive load of toddler laundry. I was worried that this load of laundry had aged me rapidly, like being the president of the United States or a small business owner, because I equate those two things at a similar stress level. The buck stops with you. Even if you have a team of employees, like it's all on you. It is an insurmountable amount of stress and it will put you through the ringer. However, the flip side of that is that there is nothing more rewarding than being able to grow it. And your timing is the tough part here. Like starting it off right before the pandemic, You survived through the pandemic, though, which is cool. Congratulations for that. And you've survived through one of the hardest times that we've seen in business in our living history. I will never tell you to walk away from that. But I will tell you that as a small business owner, you can't always rely solely on your small business for income. There is a need to diversify. There is a need for a side hustle. It doesn't have to be a second job. It could be a side hustle. But there is a need to do that. Now, your husband here, that situation with your mom is difficult. And that would be tough if you were staying with them now and mom and he are not getting along. But it also sounds like he's never been hungry. And if he was given everything growing up, like you said he was, and if that's kind of the vibe that you're getting from him now, it may just be that he's never been hungry and never really had to to work his butt off to achieve something. And if that's the case, relying on him to lead here may not happen. You may have to step up the lead. And I understand your old school mentality about, you know, saying that the man should provide for the family. Luckily, Candy Thunder hasn't had that viewpoint for us because we do everything as a team. And maybe that's one of the options that you need to explore here. As a small business owner, it is certainly a lot easier if your partner is on board with you and you guys do this thing together. There's more risk involved because now both of your incomes are dependent on it, which increases the need for that side hustle too. So it's tough. It is tough as hell. It is one of the most stressful things you'll ever flip and do. It's also one of the most rewarding though. So don't walk away from it. You do need to focus on growth though. And at some point you have to start looking at this and say, look, what's sustainable in a small business? Like what is my time worth? What are people willing to pay here? And you may have to increase some prices because it has to be worth your time. It has to be something that you can sustain making a living at. If you're doing doing all the work and you're still not able to make anything with it, then you're probably going to have to increase some prices and decrease some cost to make it work. But you have to start looking at the number side of things there to make it work. If you don't want to do that and you want to ride this out until you get the customer base built up, if you just don't have enough customers, if that is the focus, really growing the base and growing the business, then you can't rely on it to feed you. You're going to have to have some other side hustle to keep income coming in so that you can still grow. It's tough. It is really freaking tough. It's absolutely possible though. The other part time, I mean, either he's watching kids uh, coming back and taking over for grandma, or he could be jumping in and helping with the bakery as well. The specific question was, am I the asking off for not wanting to help my husband when he's asked for it? What was the help part? Yeah, that's a, that's a weird way to phrase that question. How you phrase it at the very end and say, so am I the asshole for not wanting to get a second job to help my husband? I don't, It's not helping your husband. It's for the family. I think that mentality is going to be tough and divisive. You probably need to get rid of that worldview. Otherwise, you're going to be a you versus me instead of an us need to achieve this thing. And and the teamwork aspect of it, especially since you're a small business owner, is going to be absolutely critical. You got to start thinking about this as a team approach. It's not a him versus me thing. You know, it's 2023. And and while he may feel and society may feel that it's, you know, the primary responsibility of him to be the provider, it's on both of you. And if you want to grow this business and be a small business owner, you have to think about it holistically as how it affects your family.
This one is from the AITA subreddit. It is, am I the astronaut for leaving the engagement dinner due to my fiance's obsession with the dog? I, 28 male, proposed recently to my girlfriend, 27 female. We are planning the wedding to happen next year. My fiance has a five-year-old golden retriever mix. I had a few bad experiences with dogs as a kid. Her dog is very friendly and he gets all the attention from my fiance. She denied some jobs that won't let her work from home as she is worried about the dog. I work from home three days a week and she only texts asking how the dog is. I planned this very nice trip last week to celebrate our engagement. I booked a nice hotel and made reservations at a nice restaurant. One of our close friends stayed with the dog. My fiance asked her to text with an update every two hours. I did my best to make it a wonderful weekend. We had reservations for 7 p.m. at the restaurant. My fiance didn't get ready until 6.40 as she hadn't heard from the sitter. When we arrived at the restaurant, we had to wait 30 minutes for a table to open. When we sat down, my fiance spent the entire dinner on her phone trying to get a hold of the friend. I paid for the meal and got up from the table telling her that I was going to wait in the car. She came out 20 minutes later screaming at me for leaving her at the table alone. Woo! Okay, so the story is, am I the asshole for leaving the engagement dinner due to my fiance's obsession with the dog? That's coming off. I can't do it anymore. So this was a celebration with just the two of them to celebrate the engagement. And she was too preoccupied with the dog to be able to enjoy anything. I think you're getting a good preview here into, you know, what the rest of your life is going to be like, OP. And if anything, this may be a blessing because you're engaged now, but you are not yet married. And this is something that you either need to accept and support, or you draw a hard boundary line on and communicate that and hope that she respects it, or it's a deal breaker. You have limited options here about which way to go with this. I assume that you knew how she was with her dog whenever you got engaged. So signed up for this. At least you took the next step. And now maybe having second thoughts about it. Leaving the dinner and, uh, you know, her waiting for the meal. She came out 20 minutes later screaming for leaving her at the table alone. I imagine she was pissed off about that. This is a tit for tat kind of thing. I don't think that trading blows is the way to go here. You probably need to communicate and say, hey, can you put that away for a little bit so we can enjoy this dinner? Instead of just retaliating because now it's just a one-up game. By the way, you're engaged. You're going to be married. You're going to have to to learn how to communicate through conflict and the first year of that after getting married is the toughest because you're learning how to do that but you're getting a crash course right now so it's either something you're going to learn to communicate through find a solution for and you're going to be okay with it or she's going to back off of it a little bit or it's going to be a deal breaker and the way that it looks and sounds right now is that this is not going to work out well for you guys so i kind of think you are the asshole for leaving the engagement dinner due to your fiance's obsession with the dog because you got engaged to her knowing who she was and knowing how she felt about the dog. I understand you have your own feelings as well, but you did this instead of communicating about it. So let's take a look here and figure out where you're going to be because you should have done this differently. Is it more than three? Is it a two? You definitely shouldn't have gotten up and left the dinner. It might be. This might be a two. This is. And everyone sucks here. Everyone sucks. Yes, she's going overboard. She's, I mean, treating the dog like a kid, but you knew this about her. And instead of communicating about it, you just got up and left. And that was a childish response too. So learn how to talk, guys. Learn how to communicate. Learn how to figure out a solution to this. And here you could have communicated your feelings and said, you know, this is how this is making me feel. Can we address this? Can you back off of it just for this dinner? Is there something that we can do? And instead took the childish approach of just being like, I'm taking my ball and going home. And that's not going to work. It's not going to work with a marriage. You got to figure it out. Here's the deal. He said he had a few bad experiences with dogs as a kid. So he has this wall. The dog gets all the attention from the fiance. So you've got a dog lover here and you've got, I'm not going to say a dog hater, but a dog keep his distance person. This is going to be tough to mix. It's going to be really tough to mix. I don't know, but this is one of those things where they've got to communicate through it and he knew what he was getting into. That's why, you know, they got engaged. So he apparently accepted that part of her, at least at the time. And now he just has to follow through. I keep thinking here, what if it was a human baby? Would he be as jealous then? Would he, you know, have this big of an issue or would he be on board then? What if he was like, I've had some uh, bad experiences with babies in my past. And then later on, it's this kind of crap. (sighs) 